Egypt in 2009. And so Abu Ghraib said, I, I had a private meeting with Obama, one on one. And he swore to me he's, in the, he's a Muslim. Okay? His father, from Kenya or wherever his father is, is a Muslim. If the father is a Muslim, what is he? A Muslim. Does anyone disagree with me? Am I offending anyone? It's just simply a statement of fact. His stepfather, Soatoro, I mean, the guy's name is Barry Soatoro. Is his name Barry Soatoro or Mubarak Hussein Obama? I mean, what's. Okay. So his stepfather is a Muslim. He was raised in a mosque and in a madrasa. Read his book, he says so, till age 11. Now, there was a Catholic Jesuit priest by the name of Francis Xavier. How many people remember the name Francis Xavier? He said, give me a child until 10, I'll make him a man. Obama was made a Muslim man until age 11 in the mosque and in the madrasa. And I want you to know, this guy's intelligent. He speaks Arabic, he speaks Indonesian, he speaks English. And he probably speaks other languages as well. He's not a dummy. Okay. He might not be able to speak without a teleprompter, but that's okay. <laughs> Taken care of. I was asked if I needed a projection machine or... I just go, you know. And he said, you know, I've got Obamacare problems. This is 2009. Obamacare hadn't passed yet. And I've got economic problems. But when I overcome the Obamacare problems and the economic problems, I swear I'm going to show the Muslim world what I'm going to do to Israel. Which means destroy Israel. I don't envy Netanyahu. Netanyahu has a very tough job in front of him now. So there is coordination about Syria and Iran. and I'm talking about what comes later. Okay. So in his own words, he says he's a Muslim. And you know there are YouTubes and stuff. There's a YouTube, what I just shared now, it's called Saudi Plant. P-L-A-N-T. So when you go home, or if you speak to people you know, say, look up YouTube Saudi Plant. 4.4 million hits already. I've got to finish up. I've got like five minutes left. So I want to talk now. Ten minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, Hillary Clinton, in the first two years of being Secretary of State, constantly attacking Israel. Israel this, Israel that, settlements, Jerusalem, Palestinian state, etc., etc. I mean, they ignore that two million black people were killed in the south of Sudan. They ignore that 400,000 Muslim blacks were killed in Darfur. They ignore that churches are being burned down in Nigeria and hundreds and thousands of black Christians in Africa are being killed. And, you know, I have to say about Gaddafi, praise God, he, praise God he's gone. I don't know if you know this or not. Gaddafi said that Africa would be the first continent to be totally subjugated by Islam. And there were civil wars, Ivory Coast, Liberia, in addition to Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Senegal. And Gaddafi would train Islamic terrorists with axes and hatchets and um, AK-47s and go in and kill hundreds of thousands. Charles Taylor was backed by Gaddafi. Hundreds of thousands of people were killed in civil wars, financed and, and led by, by Libya. U.S. government doesn't say anything about that. Only thing the U.S. government talks about is Republicans and Democrats. Israel, Israel, Israel. And then on February 11, 2011, something strange happens. A Tunisian fruit vendor is pushing his cart. And he, he, a policeman comes and says, you know, where's your license? What license? I never had a license. The policeman wanted to shake them. So he arrests the guy. They confiscate his cart. They confiscate his scales, you know, where he weighs his fruit. That's the only property the guy had. And then a Muslim policewoman slaps him in the face, which is the ultimate insult to an offense to a Muslim man. He leaves the police, the jail, pours gasoline all over himself, self-immolates, and he dies. And of course, as you probably know, Tunisia was under the French, is a French francophone country. Everybody has cell phones. Everybody has Google and Twitter and Facebook and all these things. And within minutes, Tunisia was up in flames. That was the beginning of the Arab Spring. And then it spread to Libya. And by the way, in Libya, it's never going to be over because you've got tribes that are committed to killing each other. It'll never end. Wait a second. You ain't heard nothing yet. And I have to wrap up already. Egypt. And I don't want to preach the Bible, but it, you know, there are passages that if I said it two years ago, you'd think I was crazy. But Isaiah 19, verse 1 and 2 say, Egyptian will fight Egyptian. 
Brother will fight brother, neighbor will fight neighbor, city will fight city. You heard dozens of people killed in a soccer game, soccer between Cairo and Port Said. And now Morsi is in danger of being overthrown in a civil war in Egypt because city is going to fight city. It's God's word. Know, for those who believe in God, I believe in God, I follow his word. Ezekiel 29 says, now this is the important one, Ezekiel 29 says that Egypt will become a desolation for 40 years. In other words, nobody will live in the Nile River Valley for 40 years. That's not me, that's God saying it. Did it ever happen in history? It never happened. It doesn't say the Egyptians are going to die. It says the Egyptians are going to be scattered to all the nations on the face of the earth, and then God will bring them back in 40 years. But Egypt will be empty. That's God's word. So let me ask you a question, give you one wild guess. Where are these Egyptians going to go? 76 million of them. They're going to come here. And Agenda 21 is going to give, provide for them the infrastructure. They're going to live in tents for a few months. You know, one of the signs of a growing economy is building, building starts. Do you know that America is now undergoing a boom in uh, housing starts? How many people know that? The American economy, you know, Wall Street's almost up to 14,000 today. Okay. And I'm telling you, with all these Muslim immigrants, you're going to have to build homes. Uh, there was a Marine, ex-Marine, was calling me every day. How many people heard of Chuck Missler in Koinonia House, Idaho? Because I work a lot with him. And uh, he was calling me while I was there. He was in California. And he was serving as a chauffeur. And his Marine commander was the tour guide for three Saudi princes. And they were driving around California and saying, this bank we're going to buy out. And then the other bank we're going to collapse. And then the bank that we bought out will buy the bank that collapsed. And all these homes that are being foreclosed by the banks, you know, the people who pay, are paying and there's still their houses get confiscated, foreclosed. The Saudis buy those too. I mean, the banks owned by the Saudis buy those too because you've got all these millions and millions of Muslims pouring into this country. And you've got the Agenda 21, the parks and the forests and the farms and the lands. I mean, Florida, I don't want to say it's empty, but Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, there's so many places Empty. You can easily put 10, 20, 50, 100 million Muslims there. And who's going to pay for it? The Saudis. The Saudis pay for everything. And your gatekeepers in Washington are bribed to the extent that nobody is, is accountable for the entry of these tens of millions of Muslims into this country. And, you know, I go to places where they don't like Hispanics and they don't like these foreigners and they don't like Hindus. And, Hispanics are not out to destroy America. Hindus